there was this event that happened over the weekend featuring uh skepta skepta performed at this puma event so there's a puma event for skepta shoes which i'm sure i kind of um spoke to you about it before in the pod and um, these particular trainers that skepta's been doing with puma which i think are fairly fairly nice i'm not gonna lie um i said before that i would have pre- probably preferred them in a boot i think as a boot shape they'd probably be quite good but i think as a silhouette regardless it's pretty it's a quite an original silhouette in a way that i kind of see a lot of like you know notes of the air max tl i think i mentioned it before um it's kind of got a little bit of an air max tl vibe about it um but i still like the shape i like the fact that the branding and the logo of the puma sign has been kind of um hidden on the upper or you, you can only see it obviously when you flash the light on the upper and you get this nice iridescent look and also you can kind of see it with the stitching but when you see it with the regular color where you can't really see the line of it so i like how they how it's not really about the logo because most shoes are like that i think that's what yeezy did in terms of changing the design language of sneakers they changed them by not having the logo be a major part of the actual design it's all hidden like even the wave runner the 350s all easies really i don't think have any overt branding some of them do have these little free free um kind of lines on the inside but usually it's not really kind of all over the top of it like they would do in classic nikes or adidas and shit so i like that skeptics kind of in you know um interpreted or taken some of that and put it in his own shoe um i also like the outsole and i just like it overall as a shape i think it's fairly sturdy also kind of sleek um kind of chunky without being too without being like a you know overtly gargantuan if that makes any sense and like i said before i think this silhouette would look insanely good in a mid or high so he did this shoe he put it out and as per usual when these brands do these type of things they always have like a influencer type of an event especially if they're doing it with a musician they'll have the musician do some sort of like live band thing and i guess uh skepta did like a live performance somewhere in london i'm not sure where where he performed and he obviously wore i think some puma apparel or that might be um included in the actual um collaboration as well and he obviously performed some bits and pieces when he was on stage and people are not happy with the crowd because the crowd are very dead um they're not really hyped as you would imagine a skeptical crowd would be but i think this makes complete sense when you think about the event itself it was mostly for industry influencer type people and not regular customers or regular fans like you and i so it makes sense why they were a bit stiff but watch the video anyway and you'll hear or see exactly what people are meaning when they mean about the fans being a little bit dead yeah well i finished my album now i owe you one that's a third of my advertising done i had a couple of my this in my mom god forgive me if i bust my God forgive me if I bust my nine. God forgive me if I bust my nine. I don't wanna get locked up like shine. This Jay and me didn't cross my line. God forgive me if I bust my nine. God forgive me if I bust my nine. I don't wanna get locked up like shine. If it is my mum then yeah, yeah. Six o'clock in the morning. I flew out, flew down the road, flew back, then flew in. My mum knows what I'm doing. And deep down I know she's screwing. I fell asleep with 13 scores in my mouth. Had a dream about As you can see from the from the video. The fans aren't really moving that much. There's not really much kind of, you know, going on there. They're all kind of standing still with their phones in their hand, wanting to capture the moment as opposed to kind of enjoying and experiencing it in real time. So people were really kind of pissed with that sort of thing. But to me, this makes complete sense because every sort of like influence or type of event I've been to has been like this, especially when the musician is playing. Everyone's more worried about their call, which makes fun, which makes sense as well because they're fucking influencers, they're cool kids, as opposed to actually having fun and going crazy. Chicken and chips like an idiot started chewing Woke up then I started spewing Thinking when is all this gonna end Had to open them up and wrap them again I've been on the road so if the beat these roll bars It's nothing I'll slap them again The real man them know I'm certified They can't score me I've been there Yeah, but when you talk about Let's on maximum Yeah, my name's Joseph But I'm your average Joe though I'm at your whole team on a solo I'm imagining a, you're imagining a game I'm like pizza hot you're like pizza me wife, I hold this a no-no Never give no girl my last roll No skepta, I still get enforced on my girl Going up and down on the X Yo, I'm like, bit MCs wanna diss my tune Same way man wanna spit on my tune Boy, fan bars can't play it max Man, pull up that bum bum Come on, man, come on If this was any other time That stage would have been shaking People would have been fainting in the crowd. They would have been jumping up and down. They would have been boop, 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 your oi, oi, oi. There would have been so much noise, so much pandemonium going on. It just as any other crowd apart from an influencer crowd. And again, I'm not too shocked. I'll... I just would have wished when these type of events happen, I know, you know, most of the time they're kind of limited in capacity. 
you don't want to draw too much attention to it you kind of want to do it in a unique space so you kind of have to do like an unofficial official type of event thing you also want to make it seem exclusive to give it a bit of a cachet but i think when you're doing an event with an artist especially a musician you maybe owe it to them to also have a portion of their fans there so maybe when they these brands do these type of influencer events it might be beneficial for them to kind of just let the artists give away some tickets to their actual fans so that they could kind of you know fill out the space and obviously make the atmosphere a little bit more electric as opposed to just all the cool kids because again i don't want to blame the fashion kids the cool kids in the scene who just want to stand there and look good because yeah why do you want to fuck up your baggy trousers and your timberlands to jump up and down the skepto you know what i mean you kind of got invited there to kind of quote unquote cover it and put on your instagram and whatever it may be on your online magazine so i get why you're being cool but to make the videos pop a bit more having people go crazy in the crowd also helps having fucking mosh pits actually helps having people pulling and throwing each other around actually fucking helps having people singing along to the bars actually helps so maybe it's advantageous to give those artists a small portion of tickets to give to their fans so that you can kind of recreate and kind of give that place that little punch and vibe that it needs because this crowd was so so dead it was quite depressing because it made you think it made you kind of doubt skepta's power it made you think hold on is skepta actually as good as i think he is or did i guess it it's like no nah, he is actually as good as you think you are we saw him tear it up at coachella we've seen him tear it up here um you know many and many a time and one good example was this legendary set back in the day this is in shoreditch underneath that bridge if you know you know um i i, I don't think i was actually there that time i might i think i i think i went i think obviously i've been raving around that area for a while and i think it was near that place called peanut the peanut factory that was in short it's true that i think that was also the place where they used to do some of the first boiler rooms and stuff back in the day but if you know you know anyway but this is a legendary sort of like reaction from kind of sketch performing in places to kind of show you what the man's power is like when he's actually around his actual fans in real life and not cool kid influencers look at the power of this <laughs> obviously that's a completely different response to the video i showed you previously so it's kind of you know sad to see him have to go through that sort of stuff but i guess as an artist it's something that you kind of have to you know kind of stomach because you know it's always the ups and downs of what you do with your career it kind of basically is what it kind of basically is now the funny thing is off the back of that there was some interesting obs um interesting um information has been put out there courtesy of skept himself on his on his twitter regarding his puma collaboration so he posts a few bits on bobs on there on his twitter page you have the main picture here from the profile um piece that he's got on hypebeast kind of covering his collaborations and his work with puma so far um you've also got him retweeting and responding to comments of people saying i hope he never retires um another one saying where he said he sold out in japan another one where somebody's saying hey you save puma on god he said i'm i'm in silhouette mode i'm just getting started so clearly you see he's happy about the whole collaboration with puma and then suddenly things kind of change suddenly things kind of change regarding the puma collaboration i'm not really sure what's going on what's happened but something changed in the midst of those tweets so his recent tweet here says made bangers at that made bangers at that last place and they still treated me like an influencer because i haven't been in school for shoe design but the game is a game i could never complain so this is a really crazy situation because i remember i said in that original podcast i was really curious why didn't nike ever sign skepta permanently as an actual brand ambassador collaborator whatever whatever the term was because the shoes that he did with nike were fucking hard right from first of all you've got the nike air max so you've got the skepta 
Nike Air Max right here, the Nike Air Max 97s, which I think was still one of the best collaborations ever in terms of a Nike Air Max 97. Then you've got the Skepta Shocks, which I think really don't get the the love they kind of deserve, especially for making that shock design popular. And because kind of, I also remember them being on the feet of everybody for a while. So I wonder after these two bangers of shoes, why didn't Nike decide to kind of sign him on permanently? Because they need it, especially with Virgil gone, especially with some of the waning collaborations that they have going on at the moment. They need probably a lot more people to kind of flesh out their kind of collaboration, you know, outlet and what they put out there. And best you, you know, with Skeeter being a UK fucking legend, obviously having that connection to grime, whatever music we play here, Europe, um, the crossover to fucking America and just his history. Again, we just have, I think intrinsically, personally, to my own opinion, I think the UK definitely has the best taste in sneakers. And he obviously coming from ends, he's known, you know, he knows about all the shoes that we've worn back in the day coming up, Hirachis, Air Maxes, Air Force Ones, all that malarkey. The scope of him designing underneath that banner would have been fucking crazy. But they didn't sign it for some reason. I didn't, never really understood why. But this might be an in, in, this might be an insight into why that never happened. Because he's suggesting in this particular tweet that Nike would treat him like an influencer, which seems to be the standard thing. Nike seemed to favour treating their collaborators, with the exception of Virgil, as inf or maybe Virgil was the same. Maybe Virgil did accept the influencer kind of um, label under Nike because he knew it was a far bigger play long term. Because I think that's what people want, and I don't blame Skepta. If you if you if you put up numbers and you you know you drop those ninety sevens, you drop those fucking shocks, and they both sell out. Plus the track suits, the imagery fucking goes hard. They still got you know influence on the streets now. They still go for crazy amounts on resale. It goes to it goes about saying that it would make sense for you to want more than just a fee. You might want residuals, right? You might want a percentage. You might want to see on the board. You might want more freedom. You might want more ownership, whatever. But you don't just want to be paid as an influencer anymore. You want more than that. I understand that. But for some reason, Nike don't like doing that. They don't like to, they kind of like to sign, they, they're in favor of signing athletes as athletes, which makes sense, giving them their own shoe, all that salaki. But they don't like doing it with influencers. And the funny thing is, I would wager, I'd go as far as saying, most likely, again, I don't know if the numbers are true, but most likely, outside of Jordans, influencer shoes are the ones that make the most for Nike anyway. I'd imagine so. Unless there's some particular Nike shoe that makes crazy amount, but I can't think of a prominent Nike basketball player now that'll be putting up as much numbers as like, I don't know, a fragment shoe would if it does eventually come out. Do you know what I mean? They just sell way better. So if that's the case, why don't you just give them a deal like an athlete deal where they get a chance to kind of, you know, lend, you know, um, lend their input to a design of, of a shoe, maybe, you know, whatever, ongoing collaboration, whatever. I don't understand why they don't do that, but they don't. So obviously he's he was ranting about that a little bit. Then he also explains here, everything happens the way it should. I proved myself in Portland time after time. And now we're in Nuremberg with a much better situation for ourselves as a team. The SK lives on. So I, I think Nuremberg is the headquarters of where Puma is, right? I'm assuming. I think that's what he's talking about there. Um, but again, I just don't understand. Like, I don't understand why he isn't still at Nike and also Sean Wolverspoon. I don't get it because they should be still there putting up numbers and helping that brand stay somewhat relevant because the collaborations are coming out now. There's a fucking shit. Another person said this. Kind of wish Skepta never signed with Puma considering their Israeli ties. Kind of wish he went to independent route. Who knows? Maybe the independent route is coming. He's hoping. Love you, Skepta. Hashtag scope. I don't like this. This I don't like this um temporary activism that fans are basically trying to ask their favorite artist or collaborator to do because unfortunately i think if if you as a customer if you as a fan don't want to buy certain things because of their ties politically and what's happening now in the world especially with the genocide going over in gaza i understand it but putting the artist in that corner is completely unfair when things change because when things change those deals are gone and now they've missed out on a huge chunk of money which then would have helped them as an artist to create certain pieces and you also miss out on maybe particular work that would have come out if they had that money in the first place so i think it's a bit unfair to judge somebody um for working with a company that might have quote unquote israeli ties in the interim especially considering how quickly things can change and you're also kind of you know 
um, stopping them from securing the bag and getting money in their pocket, which then will help them create more art for you to enjoy in the first place. So I don't really understand that whole premise anyway. It's fucking bizarre. Um, and if we do go down that route and we are kind of politically steadfast and we do kind of quote unquote cancel certain brands because of their ties politically, socially, whatever it may be, or with terms of the war, we don't really have anything to support. So there has to come a point where you kind of try to do right by your actions and less by the people you collaborate with if that makes sense but i could be wrong here he quoted that tweet and says ain't gonna lie i really is a lot more than reading the small print before signing contracts gotta do due diligence and yes i'm forever a student in practice to eventually take independent route love abdi now ab uh, abid love abid the funny thing is about what this person said also which is really i think maybe it's a bit lack of knowledge but it's really difficult to go independent like to make your own shoe from what i understand when it comes to manufacturing shoes and footwear is the most expensive shoes and footwear that's why most people do collaborations because you can just link up with somebody who's an expert and a master in their field in doing footwear and you can just collaborate on a model so you don't have to build it up from the ground up yourself but obviously you know if you can get to a point where you can do it yourself you try but for the most part footwear is really hard to do at that level high level and usually anyway if you could do go the independent route there's a lot of I've, I've seen it myself with a lot of independent shoe brands they go through a lot of like you know you have to go through you have to kind of struggle to get to the point where your shoe is actually to a level that can compete with the footwear brands out there that are doing the business because you know the quality of shirt the quality isn't the greatest the materials the access to certain factories and certain fucking processes is quite limited so the fans that try and push you to go the independent route probably won't be the ones still riding with you if you put out a couple dud shoes that the sole doesn't really look the that legit or it crumples because you have to kind of go through some shit to kind of get to the end anyway so people pushing in the eternal pattern route is kind of again short side considering how hard it is to do in the first place but we move another one says don't let puma see this and skeptic quotes and says they know how i feel i speak my mind they've announced their sponsorship will end this august the clock is ticking <sighs> So for some reason, again, I don't understand these brands. For some reason, Skepta went out there. He he somehow was able to make Puma somewhat re relevant again by making this model, which I think if they put it in different colorways, they have it in the middle or high. Um, they put out the tracksuit. They put out that jacket that he wore in some music video and shit. They actually kind of pushed this hard. I think this will do some numbers and bits. Somehow now Puma are willing to let him walk away. Again, like, so, and, like what the fuck is going on? I wonder if these brands look at collaborations with artists as being interchangeable because there's so many of them maybe but I think there's no one really of his level to replace him with that's the issue you're going to like who else of his level can you replace him with that's the problem but I guess if you're a brand you probably think to yourself oh I could just get somebody else I could probably get three other influencers to do what he could do by himself but I think as a customer as a fan you kind of want to see how his journey evolves you kind of want to see how he develops his language his design style and his language and the product offering that kind of gets done lower down the line with puma you don't want to just see like a one hit and bang type of thing you want to see how it goes on down the line and i think as puma as well i think just again as a as a fan of the shit from afar i think it's just quite cool to see all of these brands competing at the highest level with some of the biggest artists out there underneath their belt it'd be quite cool to see you know all these people going head to head bar for bar and trying to put out the best product why wouldn't you want to see that and the fact that puma would you know want to have this or let this guy walk away makes no sense to me but again there's maybe proof that this whole influencer shoe sneaker game thing is a lot trickier than what it seems to be but again i just find it interesting and odd how these brands don't sign these celebrities or these artists as athletes in that on an athlete deal and just see them as people that you can collaborate with one time and send them off on their way especially when the shoes sell out they make a ton of money why wouldn't you just want to do that again and again and again because this is far more interesting to me these pumas that skip to put out are far more interesting than them putting out another fucking puma clyde i don't give a fuck you know what i mean i'd much rather see puma try new things try and put out new silhouettes not do another retro and doing with somebody that has a lot of cachet that has a lot of clout has a lot of notoriety has a lot of influence that's actually something interesting to see um i don't want to see retros again i don't know it's just boring that's something i've kind of become i've become aware of more ever since the success of yeezy 
of like saying shit, bro. When Kanye was at, he was putting numbers on a board while also putting out different silhouettes and styles every single year or whatever maybe to the point where like he had a he was basically you know he basically rewired people's brains for to what to expect when it came to adidas and to kind of challenge themselves in terms of what they would wear and what they wouldn't wear how they'd wear it whereas these brands just bring out the same runners the same shoes again and again and again in different colorways it's just like bruh come on bro let's test ourselves let's push the limits let's kind of you know um do the unexpected and kind of go from there but again who knows maybe this is just kind of um pre maybe this is just skepta ranting now while he's kind of frustrated maybe puma will announce that they've signed him on the deal but i find it interesting or baffling that they'll let the deal go all the way down to august before they kind of make a change but who knows maybe it's a maybe it's a preemptive thing let's hope and wait and see hopefully it changes hopefully it blood clot changes